consolidated gold mine. I'm going to teach you how to pan for gold. Now the gold pans you'll be using today are just like the gold pans they used back in the first gold age. And to get started, what you want to do, you want to take your gold pan with two hands, fill that gold pan completely full of water, then bring it right back up. Now once it's full of water, you want to take your gold pan and shake it from left to right, right to left. And as you're shaking it, you'll notice a red line that we've drawn around the pan. Now that red line is going to help you. What you want to do is while you're shaking your gold pan, gently tilt that gold pan a little bit away from you and work that sand up to that red line, but not past it. You do not want to lose any sand while you're above the water. Now after about five or six shakes, shaking to that red line, you want to stop shaking. And with both hands, gently take that gold pan and push it straight down in the water and straight back up. And you'll see a little bit of sand leave the gold pan. And it is going to take a little while to do. Now you just want to shake, shake, shake. And gently wash away that sand. Bring it back up. Shake, shake, shake. Remember, right up to that red line, but not past it. And wash away that sand. Now after about 15 minutes, uh, you should be down to about a good handful of material left in your hand. Now this is what we like to call a good hand. Now once you work it down this far, you need to take your gold pan up to one of us miners, and we'll help you get the gold out for you, put in a little tube, so you can take it home for a souvenir. Now after you're done with your gold pan of the day, you might want to try out some gemstone mining. We have a wide variety of buckets for you to choose from. All right, gold miners, go ahead and take your token, turn it on in, and good luck. Did they use anybody down there this time? Or? Oh, you got a piece of gold right there. You can retire 40 seconds ago. <laughs> You're trying to sideways and look at it. see your picture. <laughs> I'm still not giving up. <laughs> He's doing this. <laughs> told me not to spend it in Walmart. <laughs> oh. Take it over to this guy and he'll do it for you, hey. Right there. Come on. Watch how fast he does it. Watch how fast he does it. Come on before he gets done. I mean, he's got he's sitting right there. Go ahead. Bob, good. I talked him into it. Watch how fast they pan. <laughs> Congratulations. It means you're an official gold miner now. Great job. Let me see. 
It's in the bottom. There it is. Woohoo! If you do hold it sideways, you can shake it a bit and make its way down to the middle. I want to see what this last prize is. There it goes. Uh, yeah. Alright, thank you. Woohoo! He graduated. Whoa! A fellow who tried to get kicks up something kind of interesting, takes it home, uses it for a doorstop and a paperweight, finally gets it checked out in town. Guess what it was? Gold. Gold, that's right, that's right. Benjamin also made a big mistake. He started bragging about it. My friends, when you find gold, you don't tell anyone. Word travels quickly. 15,000 prospectors descended upon Delonica, dramatically changed everything here. Uh, have you ever heard of the Trill of Tears and the removal of the Cherokee Indians? Yes. Started right here in Delonica because of the greed of that gold. The word Delonica is actually a Cherokee Indian word. It's pronounced Delonica, which means yellow. The Cherokee knew the gold was here, had no value to them. Once the settlers came, they decided they wanted that gold, so they pushed the Cherokee off their land, make them walk from here to Oklahoma, where a third of them perish on the way. That's the, truly the dark history of Thelonica in finding gold here. Now, the method that they used to look for gold, I think, uh, has everyone done the panning already? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly what they did originally. <clears throat> but they would find big gold nuggets. Over time, as more people came, the gold gets harder to find. So 1849 is the big California gold rush. Most of the miners, they head that direction hoping to strike it rich. You uh, ever heard that expression, there's gold in them dollar hills? They came from Dahlonega, Georgia. That was the city officials trying to convince the miners not to leave because they wanted or didn't want that revenue or money to you know, go out of town and the town end up dying. So they were trying to convince them to stay. Um, anyway, several decades later, some businessmen in the area noticed the new mining techniques they are developing on the West Coast. They say, let's bring that back to Dahlonega. Give it another try. They did in 1898, and that method is called hard rock mining. I'll explain that as we go down. Now, give real quick for just a second. Do you guys hear that water down there? You hear yes. the water? Yeah. Is everyone a good swimmer? Yes. yes. All right, we'll take the long tour then. Let's go. Can you guys hear me in the back okay? Yes, sir. All right, so I see a lot of you are uh, taking pictures. I need to talk to you about that. If you're going to take pictures, this is my good side. <laughs> take all you want. All right, hard rock mining. So most of the rock in here is granite, one of the hardest rocks known in the world. Of course, they're hoping to find veins of gold, but primarily they're looking for veins of quartz rock. And the quartz rock, you find tiny little particles of gold about the size of baking flour. They called it flour gold. To get that out of the rock, they take that quartz to the stamp hill. So imagine a big water wheel turning at the river, powers these big piston-like hammers that go up and down. These things weigh 900 pounds each. There's 120 of them in one building. This was a really big operation. So they take that rock, crush it up into powder, then they use some pretty safe chemicals like arsenic and mercury to separate that flower gold from that powder quartz. You guys see the big hole behind me here? Have one of the largest veins of quartz ever recorded. By the time they got it out, crushed it all up, they ended up getting about 54 pounds of the flower powder gold out. Guys, gold's heavy. That's a little bag of dust that big. That's it. Dust that spread out all through the quartz rock. And you say, why the effort for that? Today's prices, that's about $2 million. They got motivated. They said, we'll go deeper, we'll find more. They did, but they never got as much as they did right here. They compounded with some other reasons. By 1906, they filed for bankruptcy, shut this place down, only open for eight years. Now, as we go down, stairs can be slippery, use the rails. Tall people, I got a lot of tall people. <laughs> tall people, that rock, it likes heads. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah.
brush it up, get those little particles of gold out. So yes, there's still lots of gold in here. It's just incredibly expensive to get it out. I gotta say, they make a whole lot more money charging you guys to come in and see this place. <laughs> right? Now, this is our famous rock here. This is called the wishing rock. The reason we call it the wishing rock is if you're walking by, tap that head, <laughs> we'll wish you had. <laughs> I know, it gets worse as we go down. This is a today, not as much as Zane made, but it's considered a safer job. If she didn't pump the water out every day, just like that mine shaft below us down here, not overnight, but over time that water level would start to rise. So they put a submersible drone into that mine shaft. They went under the water about 90 feet, came up on a collapsed rock wall. We don't know on the other side of that wall how far that shaft goes or if it splits into other shafts. You guys see the light down there in the water. Yeah. Looks like you can touch it easily. It's about eight feet underwater. Wow. Pretty wild, huh? Optical illusion. Eight feet deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Now we use a uh, motorized pump to pump the water out these days, so well, there's child labor laws now. We keep going away with it. <laughs> Good job, Miner Emma. Thank you. Woo! You guys, come on, take a look, take some pictures as soon as you finish. Come on out and uh, step up here so you can see. All right, so I'm going to tell you about a miner, Miner Joe. He was a prankster. Miner Joe loved to play jokes on his co-workers. Now, Miner Joe, old guy with a long gray beard, missing all the fingers on his right hand, but his <laughs> pinky and his thumb. You know, accidents happen, fingers get lost, right? Now, Miner Joe's favorite joke to play on his co-workers, he'd take a stick of dynamite. He'd light the fuse, let that fuse get down to the quick, lick his finger, boom, put it out right in the nick of time, and he'd laugh. <laughs> now, Miner Joe's standing right there where that gentleman is one day. His co-workers are out here. He lights the fuse, gets down to the quick, he licks his finger, <laughs> but he drops the dynamite. 
Boom! Oh, no. All of a sudden, Minor Joe gets thrown against the rock. What do you see right there? Oh, my. Minor Joe's teeth right there, his bottom teeth. Oh, now, my. They say if you take your little finger, clean Minor Joe's teeth and go, hee, 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 it's good luck. Guys, let me know when everyone's out. All right, run this way, my friend. So the dynamite was very volatile. It would sweat, nitroglycerin is a byproduct. You could drop this stuff, it would detonate. So with each stick, it, boom! Oh, <laughs> Graham, you're fired. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Uh, this is why I love my job right here. Sure about the children. All right, now, we're lucky. We have these awesome LED lights. They did not have that. They cannot use oil or kerosene lamps. Because of the fumes, it would fill the shaft up, you would not be able to breathe. This is what they had. All the miners were issued candles. Oh my gosh. So the beginning of each shift, each miner got three candles from their supervisor. So it was to your advantage to work with someone to extend your lighting down here. Now I'm going to do some fun. You guys will hide your cell phones for a moment. I'm going to turn the lights off in here. And I want you to see how dark it gets. 
through this drill, then you go horizontal, not as heavy as the first drill, but the technological advancement. The drill bit is hollow. You can pump water through it. Remember that silica dust that was selected for one. Water shoots through, washes all that away. Big improvement. What's amazing about this drill? It's over 125 years old and it still works. I'm going to turn it on for you. So I'm hoping it's going to be loud. So in a moment, I'm going to have you guys up your ears. I'm going to run it for five seconds. When I turn it off, I want you to stay quiet. Quickly uncover your ears. Take a moment and listen in here, okay? So everyone cover up for me. Hey, look my hair is up. What's going on here? All right? Cover up, cover up. Cover up, everyone. Here we go. One, two, three. My understanding is a year after the line closed, they invented hearing protection. So those guys just missed out, didn't they? Uh -huh. But hey, it's not all bad news. You made a dollar and 75 cents a day. <laughs> and you're welcome to come up and take pictures. Just don't touch it or turn it on. I'll know. And uh, <laughs> we're on our way back now in the near future. It's ready. It's just about us figuring out the logistics. We're going to open that up for the public. So check the website if you're ever back in the area. It goes back a ways. It splits into two shafts. One of the shafts goes to an old elevator shaft. The guys here, we built into this thing. They took a bucket on a hoist and rock the debris out pretty good ways down. They think they're almost to a mine shaft, but 40 feet of water fills up. They pump it out and it fills up again. So we don't know if there's one mine shaft below us or a whole series. We have no idea. Have you guys been into our historic town of Delmonica yet? Yes. If you have not, it's less than a minute from here. Beautiful little town. Most of the buildings are from the 1800s when this was open. Uh, a lot of good restaurants, dessert places, gift shops. It's a tourist town. Just know, underneath that square, there are mine shelves. We're renovating the Smith House restaurant, which is on the corner about five years ago. They uncovered a mine chef in the restaurant. They put plexiglass up so you can look into it. Yeah. Wow. So what I'm getting at, I've been in, in a lot of them around here. These mine shafts are all over the place. It's pretty wild. All right, so we're going to head back into the orderly line. Bat comes flying in. It is going between every head and shoulder. Absolute chaos broke out. It was awesome. It was awesome. Come on up. Yeah. And this is their gym shop and their lapidary shop. You see the pixies and whatnot in there, lapidary machinery. And the jewelry design. Canning for gems in there or sluicing for gems. There's Bob. <laughs> Beautiful jewelry. No wire wrapping. What's up with that? <laughs> Close to it. I don't know if that's anything or uh, turquoise. Those work. I'd guess turquoise. Yeah. I'm not sure. It doesn't have a label. And this is their gift shop. 
have daycares in here now. Go that way so I can take some pictures. Nice truck. Oh yeah, it is. That's beautiful. Car or consolidated. Cut by rip. That's beautiful. Look at the limo. Oh my god. And the ruby. Buy a bulk nugget even. $2,000. Look at Bob. $2,100 for that nugget. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, get that sign right there. Nobody working in there today. Put that right there. It's a flat lap. I'm not sure what this is here. You know what that is? No, I don't. Well, it's like CNC control. The way that'll move back and forth to do its thing. Yeah. Huh. To cut machines. Interesting. You guys have a good one. Bye.